The date is the 19th of June, 2011. The time is 10.15 p.m. Today, I have journeyed within the confines of the 10th circle of hell. Dante, it would seem, missed one. For today, I foolishly undertook the task of furniture shopping alone. In my naivety, my arrogance, my hubris, I ignored the words of my friends and loved ones as they implored me not to brave the labyrinthine halls of the infernal Norseman alone. But I lose myself. I shall start the tale at the beginning. It was a bright and sunny afternoon. I was perusing the sight of that place whose hideous nomenclature I dare not utter, when I found a bookcase I quite liked. Noting that I had enough time in which to do so, I resolved to go and fetch this bookcase immediately. The horrors I endured upon that journey should have acted as some sort of warning to me of what was to come. For the infernal heat that plagued me upon the interminable hours, or eons of that ill-fated voyage, was truly unbearable. And when I finally alighted and turned to thank the driver of the bus, I found myself staring into the pulsating ebon sockets of Chiron the ferryman himself. My journey at its end, I entered into the angular and brightly lit passage tomb I was soon to loathe. Immediately, I was greeted by the yellow-robed minions of Beelzebub himself. Their horned helmets, relics of their blood-crazed and marauding ancestors. They quickly ushered me into the first chamber, the Chamber of False Hopes. For within my sights, within seconds of entering, was the bookcase for which I had come. I reached out towards it, but to no avail. I was dragged away, dragged in gripping iron claws and shoved roughly through a door into the second chamber, the Chamber of Serpentine Halls. A maze, a vast maze, a maze of such infinite proportions it made the labyrinth stalked by the fabled minotaur seem merely a garden path. I tried vainly to find my way through these twisting corridors, but on every corner, at every side, I saw such horrors, such things that humanity was never meant to know of, creatures of pulped wood and twisted metal reaching out to me with their shining tentacles and peering into me with their bulbous glowing eyes which filled the room with a sickly light. Many times I endeavored to find some escape from this horrible maze, and almost every time I found myself returned to the center. <laughs> Finally, I found a way to egress this wretched labyrinth, only to enter the third chamber, the catacomb of pasteboard and steel, aisles upon aisles of coffin-like boxes. I did not investigate the contents of any of these cardboard sarcophagi, but I could feel a presence from each and every one of them. 
I could feel that the hideous and unearthly creatures I had encountered within the maze dwelt within these boxes, dormant and asleep, awaiting some fool to bring them to their home where they may wreak untold havoc. I do not remember what happened next, but surely some great madness must have overtook me, for the very next memory I have is journeying home with one of these cardboard sarcophagi upon my back. I was carrying Christ-like the instrument of my own destruction upon my weary shoulders. When I returned home, the thing, the bookcase, was assembled quickly, almost as if there were some dreadful desire within it to be won once more. And now, now that it is finished, it sways and wobbles as if caught in some eldritch breeze. It leans at angles non-Euclidean. And now I know, as I stand here in the shadow of this black, accursed monolith, that it is the grave marker for my very soul.